Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036359, 0703 768119. Email address lsmedia at org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. So you will quickly turn with me to the, our, our passage, our scripture in the book of Hebrew again. Hebrew chapter 12. Hebrew chapter 12. I just want to read that scripture, then we pick maybe one or two scriptures more. Hebrew chapter 12. I will have not even tell you to open it, but I just want you to see. Uh, and we will all read together. All of us will read it together. And that is the last verse. That is the last verse of Hebrews chapter 12. Are you there? Yes. There must be reason why God have put it. When I see it, I was terribly afraid. But let us read it together now. Are we ready? One, go. For our God is a consuming fire. Again. For our God is a consuming for the last time. For our God is a consuming fire. Now go quickly to Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians, the letter of Apostle Paul to Corinthian Church, second chapter five. Chapter five. We pick only one verse also. This is verse it's 11. 2 Corinthians 5, 11. Are we all there? Knowing therefore the terror of the law, we persuade men. But we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your conscience. Knowing therefore the terror of the law. We did what? Eh? We persuade men. Knowing therefore the terror of the law, we cannot but persuade men. Yesterday, when our brother was giving the last message, he said something. That the issue of the yoke is not by force. Do you remember? It's voluntary. It is you who will make up your mind. Either you take it or do what? Or you drop it. When he said that, I said, ah, ah. Is God so that somebody can just stand before God and he will say, Take and he will say, I don't want. Are, are you with me? That's the way I was thinking. He said, I don't want. And God says, Okay, sorry. If you don't want, you can go. I said, I, I say, God, are you so weak to that point that you cannot? Say, I am offering you something and you are refused. I said, Take. But, you see, when our brother was talking, and he come to that point, you see, whenever I'm listening to the word of God, I always ask God, say, please, just, I may not get everything, but speak to me. What belongs to me, let me have it. Not that I've not read that scripture before, but that thing struck my heart. That our brother say, if you like, take it. If you like, drop it. I say, hey, there is a danger. Are you hearing me? There is danger. 
Maybe that have been the matter or the problem with many of us that will say, no, it's not by force. You know, you hear to say, it's not by force. May I inform you this morning? It may not be by force today. But it will be, it will, it will be by force tomorrow. And I will explain that. I want to cancel you under God this morning. That you should not take the gentility of God for weakness. Jesus came as a lamb. But he's not returning as a lamb. He's coming back as what? As a lion. I want you to hear me. That God is not persuading you. God is not forcing you. That does not mean that God has lost his power. Are you with me? That does not mean that you have conquered God. That doesn't mean that God cannot push me around. God cannot just be pushing me around. I have my right. It doesn't mean that. When Apostle Paul, our senior brother, who have learned this way before we were born, he said, <laughs> knowing what? The terror of God. Many of us, we are only familiar with the love of God. God so love me, God love me. That's, that's, well, that's good. But this man, they say, knowing that we don't only know the love, but we also know the, the terror. I was asking my question, where did Paul see the terror of God? If God in mercy can open your eyes of understanding to glance into the terror of God, you will quick, you will quick. Knowing therefore the terror of God, we cannot but do what? Persuade men. I say, ah, Paul. Even God said that it's not by force. That if they like, they take. If they don't like, don't. what is your own that you are going to be persuading men? It is because, listen to me. You see, some of you may not know what makes some of us to throw our life into this. It is because of the revelation of who? Of what? Of the terror of God. What will happen to any person that have rejected this free offer of God? Knowing therefore, you see, when I was reading my Bible, my Bible asked a question. I think the book of it says, can your heart endure? Or can your hand be strong against me in the day that I, the Lord, will deal with you? I have spoken it and I will do it. I say, hey. Hey. Do you know when you see a man that is very gentle, doesn't talk? You hit him here. You, say, hmm. you kick him. Hmm. The day that man will get up. Are you with me? The day that man will get up. Sir, ma, brothers and sister, I want to inform you this morning that this God is not a weak God. When they are pushing Jesus here and there and they push him here, they push him here. Mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. I have discovered anytime I am watching one game come re- uh, wrestling. Have you watched wrestling before? When they will carry somebody, hey, boom, you all of us, hey, they will kill it. They will, and when they are hitting that, I will conclude in my heart that this one has already finished. But suddenly, see, today that thing is still surprising me. I, must, I say, uh, is he pretending before? And he allowed this, uh, your opponent to be knocking on the ground. You will just say, just come on. Do you know such people are the ones that normally win the wrestling? 
after you have tossed them. So please, I want to inform you. You can be tossing God anyhow. Toss him anyhow. Push him anyhow. But let me tell you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Listen to me. Any battle Jesus attends, he always be the winner of the battle. No matter how you handle him. Don't relax when our brother say it's voluntarily. You can take it. Anytime God wants to help a man, do you hear him say that yesterday? Anytime God wants to show his love to any person, what will he offer the person? Eh? The yoke. The yoke. It's just a very short charge. I will soon stop. But I just want to let you know that nobody born of a woman that is yokeless. What I say? That is what? Yokeless. No one. When Apostle Paul said, because we know the terror of God. Uh, mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. We cannot just pretend. We have to persuade them. When we are preaching to them and they say no, we will not because of that do what? Turn back. We will keep on doing it. We will persuade them until when they bow. Are you hearing me now? And that is what God is telling me this morning. That you have come to a place where God is showing you love now. Am I correct? God is offering you something now. But I want you to know that God is preparing. The Bible says the time of ignorance in Acts chapter 17 verse 31. The time of ignorance God did what? He overlooked. But now he commands every man everywhere to do what? To repent. Because he has set a time. He has set a time, a day, that all the nations of the world will be judged. Hallelujah. Let's take a scripture. I just, let us read the scripture. Can you take your Bible? Now, I want you to read that scripture again. Matthew chapter 11. Please, if you get it, can you read for us 28? Matthew 11, 28. It's okay, let me read it from here because I have the mic. He said, Come unto me. I think that's clear enough. Come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am weak, I am meek and lonely in heart. And ye shall find rest unto what? Unto your soul. Now, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. I ask a question. I say, what did Jesus mean here? To me, he's, he's telling us that he's not the only one that have yoke. When he say my yoke, am I correct? <laughs> he say my yoke is easy. My burden is light. That is referring to that there are other yokes also. Are you with me? He's advertising his own yoke. It's like when you are selling something in the market. You say, yeah, this one is grade one. This one is this. This one is... So Jesus also go further by telling you that I'm not trying to put a heavy burden on your neck. That what I'm inviting you, inviting you to come and take is a very light thing. 
It's not something that is going to scatter your life. It's not something that is going to disorganize your life. It's not something that is going to, you know, make you to become miserable on earth. Very simple. I don't know. You see, it's like, it's, it's, it's begging. Say, come, please buy this. Take this. It's good for you. And I say, ah, ah, Jesus. That if you say your yoke is easy and your burden is light, then I think we need to shake it. We need to shake it. And I'll discover that the children of Israel, when they are in the house of bondage, if you read your Bible well, the Bible says when God was calling, when God called Moses, he said that I have seen, I have heard the affliction of um, the crying of my people in, uh, in Egypt. And I've heard their cry and I've seen their affliction. Listen to me. God say, I have seen the affliction, how the tax master is putting every yoke on them. He said, Moses, come and do what? And go. Bring them out. May I inform you? The reason why God is doing what he's doing in our day now, in our day, is because God has seen the kind of the affliction, the kind of the, you know, you know, the, the yoke, the, 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 the suffering that many people are passing through. God has seen that many people are suffering. We are laboring. And he says, okay, let me just go and offer my own yoke to them. If they will just take it. Are you with me? So we now discover that when Jesus began to say, my own yoke is easy and my body is what? It's light. I say, hey. Then we, 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 we submit that Jesus is showing us his love now. He's showing us love. And one, one thing I want you to grab this morning, please hear me. One thing I want you to grab this morning before we move forward is that if you don't take this yoke now, thank God at least by now all of you, most, mostly, almost everybody here we know now that we are not just a denominational people who are looking for a member in our church. Am I correct? It's just this issue of persuading men to take this yoke of Jesus. We are not telling you to take the yoke so that you can become the member of Peace House. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. We are not advertising the yoke to you so that you can leave your church. We are not telling you about this yoke to take it because we want you, are you hearing me now, to say now, as a person that bearing the yoke of Christ, I want to join discipleship church. Mm-mm. As we begin to study together as the Lord will permit us, you will come to agree with me that the reason why God is offering this yoke is number one for your own life. For your life. Amen. Then I say, I have to check. When Jesus said, my own yoke is light and my body is, and my, 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 my body is light, my yoke is easy, I want to check. And that makes me to discover, say, yes, Truly, truly, you cannot be yokeless. You can't. There's no way your neck can be free. I want us to read Deuteronomy chapter 28. Very good. Very fast. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Are we there? Can we look at verse 47 and 48? 47 and 48 of Deuteronomy chapter 28. I will read. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Therefore, Thou shalt serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. 
in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until ye have the word destroyed, ye have destroyed thee. Listen to me. Because you refuse to serve the Lord your God with gladness, with joy, to serve the Lord your God, to take His yoke, the simple yoke that is given you to take it, you refuse. He now said, you will serve who? Your enemy. Please, who can tell us when he say your enemy? Who can tell us what the Bible means in that place? What is what who's our enemy? Eh? Who is our enemy? The devil. You will serve your enemy. Now, if you look at that scripture where he didn't say you will serve your enemy, just like that. He said, You will serve your enemy. Which the Lord your God will do what? We send. That is what, that is where my fear comes. It is not just that you will go and meet the enemy. If you like, whether you like it or not, God will send that enemy, Satan, that I am offering you somebody who have refused to take my yoke. Because I have never created any person to be yokeless. As far as he have refused to take this yoke, then, are you hearing me? He now said, you will serve this your enemy and he started counting. He said with what? Number one, with hunger. Go and find out from the children of Israel in the land of Egypt. They will explain this scripture better. You will serve your enemy with what? With hunger, number one. Number two, with test. Number three, with the want of all things. That you will be suffering and you will be hungry and they will be hitting you rod on your neck. Serve. Are you hearing me? And you will keep on serving and serving until when it will destroy you. I am not a businessman. And I'm not advertising the yoke of Jesus to you too much. I'm only telling you that before you leave this camp, you will choose one. Are you with me today? You will choose one. Either you choose this simple yoke of Jesus or prepare yourself to serve your enemy. I'm hearing some people say this discipleship, discipleship thing. I said, Brother, what are you saying? Is it only discipleship we are going to be talking about? What is it? I say, hey. And when I look at him, I say, hey, I pity him. I say, brother, you talking like this? Because, you know, there, many of us don't know. We don't know that there is another yoke waiting. You will serve your enemy with hunger. With, you see, when he was saying that, that I'm the one to send the enemy, then I now discover what Proverbs chapter 1 is saying. You know, have you read Proverbs chapter 1? He said, I can't say you, you did not listen to me. I call you. Let's read it. Let's read it. Proverbs 1. Can we read just chapter 1? Verse 23. Verse 23. Verse 23. Are you there? Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out of my spirit upon you. And I will make you know my words. I will make know my words unto you. But because I have called. Listen carefully now. Because I have called. In verse 24. And ye do what? 
You refuse. I have set out my hand and no man regarded. But ye have set at not all my cancer and would none of my reproof. I also, verse 28, I mean verse 26, I also, we do what? We laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as this desolation and your destruction cometh as a white wind, when distress and anguish come upon you, then shall ye call upon me. But I will not do what? I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. I say, God, there are the people that refuse the yoke of Jesus. The people that Shun Jesus. When he said, take my yoke, take my yoke. He said, the time will come. When (laughs) Oh my God. The time will come that you will begin to serve your enemy. And do you know that time that he's talking? He now saying that you are going to be praying. Am I correct? You'll be praying, oh God, oh God, this thing is too much. Oh God, deliver me. But do you know what surprised me? God who is answering God. God who say, ask me anything, I will do it. He now says something here. Because I'm seeing God in two sides now. I see love and I see terror. Am I correct? When you are going to be praying and begin to speak in tongues, Jesus, ah, hurrah, ba, 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 yeah, this thing is too much. What the Bible says God will be doing? Who can tell us? What will God be doing? Hey, brethren, for you to be praying, you can even be fasting. No, this affliction is too much. Oh God, please. And God will say, <laughs> somebody asked me a question. He said, is it true that pe- pe- people will go to hellfire? He was asking me. He said, because to him, God is so kind. God is so loving. I said, hey. He said, I will laugh at what? At your calamity. It will not be your person in the name of Jesus. So in this, in this camp, I see again God demonstrating his law. He said, take my yoke upon you. When we are talking about issue of yoking, it's not only in the New Testament. God said, you will carry it and I will send the enemy. You will, se- you will save that enemy. This morning, I want to I want to beg you in the name of the Lord that you don't you don't harden your heart to this invitation the Lord is giving to you. Our brother was explaining yesterday very clear. I said, he said that he said this yoke that we are where he's talking about is voluntarily. If you like, drop it. God is not forcing you. But by the revelation of the word of God today, we begin to discover that if you don't take it now, you will take it tomorrow. Even as we are talking now, many of you seated here, you are already under that yoke of the enemy. Can you imagine that you want to pray for somebody? That has happened to me many times. People are on the line, I want to be praying. And as I want to lay hands to be praying, just to cry to God, I will hear, I will find a kind of restriction in my heart. It will just come that I should not waste my time on this. I say, ah, God, what is this? It has happened many times. People can be lined up, and I'll be praying and praying. Just to even put my hand, my hand will become somehow heavy. My heart will be, it's like I'm getting dry. Until when I turn to another person, I want to pray before I can flow. I say, maybe these are the people. <laughs> oh, you are not understanding me. Are you getting me? <laughs> maybe, <laughs> they, they, so that I will not find myself trying to support the people that God have rejected. Many of you have been going from prayer house to prayer house. From one deliverance to another deliverance. You better suspect whether this uh, uh, is it Jeremiah or Deuteronomy. Maybe you have started fulfilling on your own life. Because I know that God might have offered you this yoke some time ago. Earlier. And you put it aside. Maybe the reason why different calamities befalling you 
You say, but I have prayed. Reverend Sosa has prayed. Bishop has prayed. And the, the council member, they lay hand on me and say, no way. You better check it now. When our brother said, God resisted the proud. The proud are far off. Oh! Please, sir. Please, ma'am. What is the opposite of resistance? Who can tell us? Who can tell us? Eh? Assistant. When God resists a man who have refused to carry Jesus' yoke, he resists him. I say, that man that is coming, they should not allow him to draw closer to me. Then is that the kind of a man I am going to be wasting my time for? Say, hey, Father, open the door. Father, break through. Father, I am wasting my time because any man that has been resisted by God, any man who, want, if you want to support a man who has been resisted by God, you are looking for God's problem. There are many of you now that even somebody say, I will help you. Just come, there's no problem. Come, come, come and collect the check. As you are just going to collect the, collect the check because for, for a business, and suddenly terrible thing will happen to a man. He said, Hey, it was just day before yesterday, before you arrived. Thief have come and carry all my money away. You are the cause. Because he wants to help you. But he did not know that you are you are in loggerhead with God. And God will quickly block that head. If you refuse to take the yoke that the Lord is offering you, prepare your neck. Is it the yoke of wood? I think they mentioned the yoke. Hiya. The yoke of Hayo. Anything you want to enjoy, begin to enjoy it now. Because the iron yoke is coming on your neck. I'm not saying this to frighten you. Are you hearing me now? We are only telling you the truth, the word of God, as it is written. When people say it doesn't matter, just say, just come and pray. God, God is with you. The Lord is with you. All the time you are good. Everything is well. It's lie. It's lie. Any man, the Bible said there shall be no peace, there will be no peace for, for the wicked. If the sinner in the whole world join their hand together, they will never go out unpunished. So this morning, I want to plead with you that you better submit yourself. To this yoke. Simple yoke. Easy yoke. Since I have put my neck into it. Oh, you don't know the way I am I'm happy. Joy in my heart. You know that scripture say, He who live father, mother, brother, sister, love for my sake. He will get it how many four? Hundred four. I say, hey. When I was leaving my parents because of this salvation. And I moved away as a Muslim boy. I didn't know that God is preparing me for a greater thing. Are you with me? All of you that are here, are you not my brother? Yes. Are you not my sister? Yes. The kind of the bed that I've been sleeping on. Sometimes it will be a one narrow bed like this. I will sleep it because I put my neck in the yoke. Say, Jesus, say, this is where we are lying down today. I say, yes, sir. We lie down. On the bench, we go for a meeting. There's no room, nothing to sleep. They put one bench outside. She to this your place. Master, are you here? Say, I'm here. Let's sleep. We sleep together. Sometimes we go to a place, they will make it, prepare a room. The bed will be so wide. And Jesus said, my son, I said, sir, we are sleeping here today. You are going to sleep with me. So when I'm sleeping on a wide bed, I prepare my mind already that there may be a wooden bed somewhere that we are going to sleep tomorrow. When you put your neck in this room, whatsoever the master say, you will do. Whatsoever the master is eating, you will eat. Wherever the master is sleeping, you will sleep. Are you hearing me? As far the master is there, it makes the yoke very easy. Make your choice. Make your choice. Because yesterday when people are coming out and they are standing here, say they are ready. And I look at some people who still sit down very comfortably. I say, ah, did these people understand this message? Maybe it is the yoke of iron on your neck that did not allow you to get up. As we are going to enter into a time of practical discussion, please, I want to beg you, 
we need to discuss practically. How can we advance? How can we move on? Are you hearing me now? I want you to deliberately make a choice this morning. I'm not calling it call, but you will make a choice in your heart. Say, if the matter is like this, oh, I, better, I better take this simple yoke now. We have taken it. In fact, the way I was thinking before, it's not the way I'm seeing it. I was thinking when I enter into discipleship, I will become so wretched, become so tattered. And especially when the Bible says that uh, uh, if you are going, don't take a pole, don't take a shoe, don't take a sandal. I said, which type of thing is this? I was thinking that I would just be going up and down like a miserable man. Then I will be going up and down and they will say, uh, brush it to come. We have a leftover gary somewhere. Uh, come and take it. But when I enter, I say, eh. I discover that Jesus deliberately, he kept the goody goody. The goody goody in discipleship. He keep it aside, waiting for the people who will respond. I, he doesn't entice me with good things. He will tell you, say, you leave your father, you leave your mother, you hate yourself, you will eat my meat, you will drink my blood. That is the message of Jesus. To know your heart, to know whether you are really ready. It is the people that want to destroy your, your life will be telling you, say, don't worry, you get your visa, you get your car. They don't want to kill you, but Jesus wants to help you. He will not present Fisa, he will not present Jeep, he will not present, he will present something to you to test your heart to know. Well, I refuse to put my neck in this yoke for many years. But that year that God helped me, and I submit and I go and report to my to our brother, say, Brother, I have come. I have come. I have come. I have never dreamed in my life that I can go to the nation to go and be preaching. I have never dreamed in my life that I can be standing before the men of God, minister, reverend, leaders, to be speaking the word of But when I put my neck in this yoke, and the Lord begin to walk over my life, all the excess luggage that I carry from Egypt, that I did not begin to drop them. Are we ready this morning? That this is it, Lord. You don't tell Jesus to put the neck. You are the one to do what to take it. As we are going to be continuing our discipleship teaching and training, you will now begin to understand clearly what the Lord is saying in this camp. May the Lord grant you understanding. May the Spirit of the Living God reveal this matter to you. It can only be known by revelation. We are going to pray. You will just simply tell God. Say, Lord, mm -mm, the yoke of iron, mm -mm, not me. The yoke of iron, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, not in my neck. Not my own neck. We don't have time to tell you the people that carry the yoke of iron in the Bible. They cry, they pray. They sing, they fast. No way. You are telling me that eh, eh, God will answer, will answer. He answers prayer. But I'm seeing you can say that you will be praying. He said you will wake up very early. Very, very early to seek him. He said you will not find him. You will not find him. And why will you not find him? Because he is behind of your problem. He said I'm the one that sent that enemy to you. Bow your head and let us pray. You say Lord... This my own neck is not for it's not for the yoke of iron. I want to take your own yoke. I want to become your disciple. I want to follow you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh. To Jesus, I surrender unto Him. I freely give. I will not 
I surrender. I surrender. Who am I mind to fight against you? Who am I mind to reject your offer? Who am I mind to say no to this offer? I surrender. I surrender. No, I surrender. Who bought me that I will reject and refuse what you are offering me? In this place, what you are offering me is more than money. What you are offering me is more than is more than wealth. Is more than house. It's more than the most beautiful car. Lord, I surrender. Mana Raba Sando Raboya. Rebolika Sanda Yana Rababoria. I surrender, Lord. Let your will be done. Open your mouth and say, Let your will be done. Let your will be done in my life. I surrender. I am ready to follow. I am ready to take your yoke. Parakuri Basanda Labaya.